Hey friend, this is Mai with Creative Vibes, and today I wanted to talk about the history of music therapy, where it came from, how it started, how it became accepted as a profession, and I wanted to start with the history that I learned in school, and then I wanted to cover the history that I've learned after I've left school and started doing my own research. So the history that I learn in school usually starts in Greek philosophy, mainly with Pythagoras, Aristotle, and Plato. So Pythagoras is allegedly the one who discovered this golden mathematical ratio between all musical notes, which is now known as the harmonic or overtone series. Aristotle and Plato both saw music as a pleasurable experience, but they also saw it as a means to an end, mainly to dispose of moral virtue or foster intellectual advancement. So it seems like ancient Greek society was one of the first people to really start exploring music not just as an experience, but also how it can affect the people that are listening and playing it. The earliest known written reference to music therapy appeared in an article called Music Physically Considered in 1789. And in the 1800s, there were several dissertations written on the therapeutic value of music, as well as the first ever recordings of interventions and experiments of music therapy. Music therapy really started taking off during the Second World War, when the Entertainment National Services Association would bring music to wounded British and American servicemen who were in the hospitals. Doctors and nurses really started to see a difference in these soldiers, and that's when music therapy finally started becoming recognized as a profession. But I really started wondering, is it possible that only Europeans and Americans were the only people that were thinking about the therapeutic value of music in the entire world, in the entire history of the entire world? I don't know. So that's why I did a little bit more research, and this is what I found. Some cultures, including the Native American traditions, believe that music had mystic powers. Music seemed to be a big part of everyday life for these people, where they had different songs for planting crops, curing the sick, and warding away evil. The use of music as therapy was actually documented in ancient China's first medical text called The Yellow Emperor's Classic of Medicine, which was written 2,300 years ago. Music as therapy was seen as part of the five element theory, which is the foundation of all traditional Chinese medicine. The five element theory states that all things in nature are composed of five elements, fire, water, wood, metal, and earth. Each of these elements have different corresponding aspects, such as season of the year, internal organ, color, and musical note. Chinese medicine used the relationship between musical note and internal organ to achieve different healing purposes. The five musical notes that correspond to each element are Zhao, Ji, Sheng, Gong, and Yu. The Zhao note is correspondent to the letter E in Western musical notation and is also related to the wood element, is the sound of spring, and helps the liver functioning. It's also thought to relieve depression. The G note corresponds to the letter G in Western musical notation and is related to the fire element, is the sound of summer, and influences the heart. It's supposed to help nourish the heart and invigorate blood flow. The gong note corresponds to C and is the sound of earth, late summer, and the spleen. The shang note corresponds to the letter D and is the sound of metal, autumn, and strengthens the lungs. The U note corresponds to the letter A and belongs to the water element, winter, and nourishes the kidneys functionings. Ancient Indian societies were also interested in music and its influence on people, as literature on the science of music dates way back to the 4th century BC. Dakshikitsa is one of the ancient texts that examines the therapeutic role of musical melodies, and in the 16th century, classical musicians were often called upon to use music to treat illnesses. In the 17th century, a work titled Sangita Suda explored the effect of music on emotions. Ancient works in the form of palm leaf manuscripts depict the remedial use of music on psychological ailments. Similarly to Chinese classical music, Indian classical music also has relations between certain notes and melodies and permanent aesthetic moods. So I think what I learned from this is that the history of music therapy that we are learning today and the history of music in general comes primarily from a Eurocentric perspective, which means that we miss out on all of these amazing things that other non-European cultures 
we're doing and exploring with music. Now, I know as music therapists, we're all striving to be as culturally aware as we can be. And this is a constant process. We're never gonna be done with it. I think a great starting place is examining the history of music therapy and of music in general. What were we taught and what perspectives were missed in the history that was taught to us? Obviously, these aren't the only cultures that have ever thought that there could possibly be some therapeutic value in music. So, if you have anything to add, if you knew of other interesting music therapy history facts, or if you feel like I've made a mistake on something, please feel free to reach out. You can leave a comment down below. I'm always so excited to learn more about music therapy and music therapy history. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, don't forget to leave a comment. See you guys next time. Bye!